Professor Ulrich from the German Cancer Center in Heidelberg, Nelly. Thank you for giving us a couple of minutes. As you know, the European Platform team are meeting here in uh, Berlin, and uh, we've had a fairly intense discussion about all the molecules and all the receptors and all the targeted uh, medicines. And we haven't heard too much about the patient, the person, the individual. And this is, of course, your realm. Well, of course, we all think about the patients all the time as well, and sometimes it may get a little bit forgotten over the excitement, over the great technologies that we have available, but we shouldn't forget that patients actually come in and they ask, what can I do for myself now, mm -hmm. how I can contribute to this process of healing. And what do you say when they ask you that? Well, at the National Center for Tumor Diseases and the German Cancer Research Center in Heidelberg, we um, do a number of studies on exercise among cancer patients right already during therapy, randomized controlled trials, and we have really impressive results with respect to quality of life, um, physical performance, ability to sustain the therapy, and this is a very important area that's not very st well studied yet. Sure. Um, you uh, chaired a, a, a beautiful symposium at the German cancer meeting on obesity mm -hmm. and um, there the patient was central. <laughs> but even there the molecular biologists are coming in with all sorts of interesting uh, mm -hmm. work on leptins and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, what drives obesity and, and so on. What's, what, what's the, 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 the sort of the bottom line at the moment? What's the state of research on, uh, on, on obesity? diet versus exercise, mixture of both? Yeah, so it's basically the concept of energy balance that matters. And it's interesting that you ask because we just published yesterday in Cancer Research a very interesting study among overweight and obese postmenopausal women, more than 400 who were stratified or randomized to either caloric reduction or um, a exercise program for a year or combination of the two or a control arm. And we showed that they could reduce their C-reactive protein levels by half wow. through these lifestyle interventions. And these were women who had not done much before, who came in with a body mass index in average of 30, body fat content average of 50%. And these are very, very encouraging results on how we can impact the human's biology and the inflammatory processes in the body through lifestyle interventions. And it didn't matter which intervention? Well, actually, the caloric restriction was more effective, but even among the exercisers, those who lost body weight were those who benefited. Sure. How do you motivate uh, patients to, to, to take uh, control of their own lifestyle? For patients, it's usually not that hard to motivate them. They come in, they want to know what they can do. There are, there are differences. I think um, breast cancer patients are very, very highly motivated. Stem cell transplantation patients as well, we notice that. For lung cancer, it depends. There often is more a fatalistic approach to their disease at that point. But in general, um, it, they want to know what they can do, and they don't just want to know what the doctors can do. Sure. So can you translate that approach to the preventive setting? Yes, of course. So the, the preventive setting, the study that I just mentioned, those were healthy. These were not cancer patients. They were I not cancer the patients. The 400 uh, that I just talked about, okay. published in Cancer Research, yeah. those were healthy ah. postmenopausal women who right. were at high risk of breast cancer and colon cancer okay. simply because of their body weight right. and their inactivity, etc. And it was possible to motivate them to participate in this in this randomized trial. And they were, as I said, like highly successful in changing biomarkers that are relevant to cancer risk. I mean, a lot of people are studying uh, patients uh, who've had cancer or mm -hmm. still got it and looking at the same sort of devices. Uh, but this is really important that you've got the stage before that yes, and you're looking at high-risk individuals. Uh, what about uh, what about smokers? So smoking is a is a critical variable, probably not just with respect to cancer risk, but also with respect to prognosis and outcomes. Uh, there's more and more evidence for that. There are studies now that show smoking, um, showing that smoking is equally important as EGFR mutations. Right and that was published in JCO, but still what we do right now is focus very much on the mutations and ignore the health behaviors. And I think for a full assessment of what determines prognosis and how we can improve it, we need all of these factors. Mm. And the motivation of smokers? Uh, I mean, we, we run uh, Spiral CT uh, for uh, volunteers who are heavy smokers at the European Institute of Oncology in Milan. And 
I'm intrigued to know what's different about these people who volunteer for that sort of, uh, of uh, procedure compared to those who really don't want to even talk about smoking. Well, I'm, I'm not an expert on spiral CT uh, screening, so I don't know who volunteers for <laughs> these activities at that point. I, well, all I'm talking about right now is just that, that factors that patients do themselves, such as smoking, exercise, etc., can matter with respect sure. to treatment outcomes, sure. and we tend to ignore them right now. Sure. So we need to switch off the microscope occasionally, stop looking at the fish assays for receptors, and occasionally stand back and have a word about smoking habits and uh, lifestyle and uh, exercise and, uh, and uh, weight control? Well, I wouldn't switch off the microscope. I think all these factors belong together as sure. for us to provide the best care. And we, um, you know, there has been a randomized control trial with more than 2,000 breast cancer patients showing that a low-fat diet, high in fruits and vegetables, reduced recurrence by a quarter. Yep. And that's as much as chemotherapy can do. Sure. But because there's no pharma industry supporting this, sure. it hasn't really made it into clinical practice. So I think these approaches are complementary and we need them sure. both. I quite agree. Uh, they, 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 I'm still intrigued by this idea of motivating people, however, people who don't have symptoms and who don't feel unwell. Yeah. Um, and people whose educational level is, is perhaps not university professors like, uh, like you, uh, and who don't get messages on, on health, and if they get them, they don't understand them or they immediately bin them. How, how do we get at people who, who are the, 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 uh, the underbelly uh, of, of, our, of our countries? And we all have these, and that uh, population of unemployed, uh, poorly off, poorly educated people is growing yeah. in all the European countries. Uh, it seems it's a, it's a real issue to me because they get more cancer, we know that, yeah. and they do worse when they get the cancer. So what's your thinking about approaching that, that group of people? Well, we, we do need more research with respect to what the most effective health promotion strategies mm. are among those groups because, as you point out, there are people who are interested in, for example, a healthy diet and they tend to also take supplements, etc. Um, I think we've been very successful in Germany with respect to smoking prevention, mm. thanks to efforts of the DKFZ, Frau Pötschke Langer there. Um, we have now, among the youth, only a 12% um, rate of smoking in Germany, which is fabulous. and. Mm. Girls and boys? Girls and boys. Wow. And, and as, however, for her, I think the most important factors were, um, according to her research, well, first the increases in prices, tobacco mm. prices, and secondly, also the smoking bans that we have now. Mm. And so we can really do something without targeting these individuals themselves by just having public health measures. Mm. Good. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate you giving us a little bit of time. and. Readjusting our focus, uh, not uh, not ignoring the receptor data, not but ignoring the receptors, including yes, including uh, into having the a, com a comprehensive multidisciplinary into, view. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Nelly, and uh, we'll speak again. I have no doubt. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.